Welcome back to Copper Star Precision. Today we're continuing our educational series, so if you're liking the videos, please subscribe, like, and comment on the video. It helps me know that I'm doing a good job. If you have any constructive criticism as well, I'd love to hear it. Today's topic has been requested by a few people, and you'll see me do this in my strategy videos for the NRL 22 matches, where I convert all of the target sizes, in my case, into mills. Um, you can also convert them into MOA. I convert them into mills simply because my scope that I use is a mill scope. And we'll talk about what that means for matches later. But I think it's an important idea to do this because you have a huge advantage when it comes to known targets at known distances to do this. So it makes sense for me to do it ahead of time. We're going to talk about how to set up a spreadsheet so it makes it easy. We don't have to do the math. All we got to do is plug in the numbers. And we'll discuss some of the advantage of doing this ahead of time just to give you an idea on strategies you can do and how you can score more points, which is all about what this channel is about. So let's just jump right into the presentation. As usual, we have an agenda here. We're gonna talk about the advantages. We're gonna talk about how to calculate them, uh, the target sizes in mills or MOA. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you the equation. I'm gonna lay out the steps. I'm gonna show you a spreadsheet that you can copy and do yourself. I'm gonna give you some use cases of why that might be useful and then we'll conclude at the end. So let's dive right into it. Some of the advantages. Converting targets to MOA or MRAD gives a standard unit of measure for apples to apples comparison. What do I mean by this? So essentially, if you have different target sizes, different distances, um, you know, a two inch target here versus a three inch target there, it doesn't actually mean anything unless you take the distance into account. So remember from the last video, we talked about MOA and mills as angular units of measure. We can use angular units of measure to look at a target to see how much of an actual angle that target subtends. And then we can make an apples to apples comparison between those two angular measurements, which will account for both target size and distance. It allows for additional strategies for wind estimation and holdovers. So it could be holdovers for wind, it could be holdovers for elevation on a multi-target stage. Um, I went over an example of that in the July course of fire, which we'll talk about later, but also a huge advantage to scoring more impacts on targets. So let's talk about the calculation. It's very straightforward, but here we go. We have that right triangle and some trigonometry again. So let's say we use the target size and distance that we can calculate the target size and convert that into MOA or milliradians. So we have our rifle over there, we have some angle theta, and we have that target in blue, and we have a distance. So our, our target is our exaggerated sizes, of course, a large blue target at some known distance, and we have our rifle. What can we do? So setting up the equation, it's going to be similar to before. We're going to solve for the angle theta, which is denoted by that symbol. And remember from the last video or from your high school geometry trigonometry classes that tangent of an angle theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So in this case, it's going to be the target size over the target distance. It's going to be important that both of those are in the same units. So if we solve for theta, we're actually solving for that angular measurement. So that's going to either be, depending on what kind of conversion we use, MOA or mills. So to solve for theta, we just rearrange the terms. All you need to know is that the angle is equal to the inverse tangent, that's tangent to the negative one, inverse tangent of the target size over distance. Pretty straightforward. And then we're going to convert that angle theta into either MOA or mills. So let's go over the steps. Convert the target size and distance to the same units. Step number one, right? Everything has to be in the same units um, in terms of distances. So, so inches, inches, yards, and yards. Uh, it has to be the same. We'll talk about how to do that. We're going to take the inverse tangent. That's a simple function that we can do in a calculator or a spreadsheet. We're going to convert that angle to MOA or milliradians, because remember, they're different angular measurements. They're both angular measurements, but they're different in how they're calculated. So let's talk about how we set up our spreadsheet now. So I did this in Google Sheets. You can do it in Excel. I think the, I'm pretty sure the equations are actually the same. Uh, I use Google Sheets here because it should be free. And if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, one, please subscribe while you're there. And two, you probably have a Google account, which means that you have access to Google Sheets. It's under Google Drive. Uh, it's a free to use sort of spreadsheet based program. Um, very simple. So here is kind of how I had my spreadsheet laid out. It's simple. It's just columns A through F. So we start with the target size in inches and the distance in yards. Now, if you're living in another part of the world where your target size are given in uh, centimeters or fractions of a meter and your distance is in meters, you'll have to make the appropriate conversions, um, but it should be very similar. So we have target size, column A, distance in yard, column B. Column C is going to be distance in inches. All we're doing is converting yards to inches. Column D is the angle, and it's gonna be in radians by default. And then we're going to have the target size in mills and target size in MOA. So let's go through each of these columns and uh, we'll talk about the calculations. The first two columns, A and B, are our inputs. Everything else is calculated for us. So step one is to convert the distance to the same unit as a target size. So that's going to be column C. As you can see, the equation there, we're just taking the previous cell, in this case B2, 
And for converting from yards to inches, we have to multiply by three and then multiply by 12. There's three feet in a yard, there's 12 inches in a foot. So times three times 12 or times 36 because there's 36 inches in a yard, same thing. So we get from 100 yards to 3,600 inches. Pretty straightforward. In column D, we're gonna take the inverse tangent and the function in Excel and Google Sheets is called ATAN, is the subscript for uh, the inverse tangent function. And this result will be in radians by default. So we take, uh, as you can see in the cell D2, we have equals ATAN, which is the inverse tangent function. And remember, it's the opposite side over the adjacent side. So it's the target size over the distance. So uh, we have the inverse tangent of cell A2, which is the target size, divided by cell C2, which is the distance in inches. Remember those two units have to be the same. This spits out 0 0.0006944 radians, uh, is the angle that that sort of triangle makes if you think about it that way. Here's the equation once again, just to remind you. So to get to MRAD, it's super easy because um, the angle that we got in the previous step is already in radians. We just have to convert to milliradians. There's 1,000 milliradians in a radian, so we just multiply by 1,000. So that's this cell here, cell E. Take the previous cell, multiply it by 1,000, and 0.694 is that target size in um, mils, milliradians. To do MOA, we have to convert the previous step, the second previous step, the result from the inverse tangent function from radians to degrees. And then we multiply by 60 because there's 1 60th minutes of angle or there's 60 minutes of angle. I'm sorry, 60 minutes of angle in one degree. So what that looks like is we use another function. It's just simply called degrees, pretty self-explanatory. So we take degrees of that angle in cell D, that, that inverse tangent function result that converts that radian into a degree measurement. And we multiply that by 60 and find out that the target size here is 2.387 MOA. So the target size is 2.387 MOA or 0.694 mils. All this is great. We had the spreadsheet set up. What the heck does this mean? Why do you go through all this trouble? Once you have the spreadsheet set up, it's simple just to copy down a bunch of rows and then put in all your values. So let me give you an example. We're gonna, like I said, we're gonna compare the absolute size of a target versus its relative size in the angle that it makes um, from our shooting position. So here I have the same exact spreadsheet as before with the same example in row two. In row three, I put a new target. It's a 1.75 inch target at 65 yards. Now, something interesting happens. The second target is smaller absolute, in absolute terms. It's 1.75 inches is smaller than two and a half inches. But it's actually a slightly larger target than the, than the first target. Because if we look at the mil and, or, or MOA columns, either or, depending on what you're used to using, we notice that it's slightly larger. So that 0.69 becomes a 0.74, and that 2.3 mils is a 2.5 mils. So it's slightly larger and should be theoretically easier to hit. So if you're on a stage or you have a choice of targets or you have, um, you know, you have a series of targets and these two targets are in them, you may want to spend a little bit more time on that 2.5 inch 100 yard target because it's smaller in terms of its relative size, even though the 1.75 inch target may be smaller absolutely, it's gonna be easier to hit. So if you need to spend more time on a target, uh, spend time on the harder to hit targets. Make sure you have a stable built, uh, position, all that kind of stuff on the smaller relative target sizes. Um, and I think that's a, a good strategy is to spend more time on the targets that are harder to hit and, and try and engage the targets that are theoretically easier to hit um, at a faster cadence. Use case two, we can use for wind. So wind is blowing from right to left between five and 10 miles an hour. Our DOPE, Data on Previous Engagement, says that at 100 yards, our adjustment for five mile an hour wind is 0.4 mils and 0.8 mils for 10 miles an hour. That's what our uh, DOPE card and a DOPE ballistic calculator tell us. So if the target is one mil wide, if I hold dead center, I will still hit the left edge of the target because the right is blowing from right to left if the wind is five miles an hour. But if it's pretty much anything more than that, I'm gonna miss off the left side. But knowing this, I can hold close to the right edge. And if it's five miles an hour, it will actually move towards the center because remember the target is about one mil wide. So it's half a mil is the radius of the, the target, right? Uh, to the center. And the dope says it's gonna move 0.4. 
if it's five mile an hour wind or it's gonna move 0.8. So if I hold right edge, I should get close to a center hit if the wind is five. But even if I was wrong in my estimation or there's a small gust front that jumped up to 10 miles an hour, I'll still hit the left edge of the target if the wind is 10 miles an hour. So understanding the target size and sort of bracketing for that wind as you watch other people on the stage or if you watch the wind flags or if you look at sort of if someone misses and you see the, the puff of uh, dirt in the berm and you see that sort of wash one way and you've estimated that the wind is fluctuating between you know two different values, relative values, maybe use a wind meter or a kestrel, you can use that to bracket the target um, when, once you know your wind calls at different distances. And I, I, I suggest you know doing wind calls about every uh, 25 to 50 yards, so like have 25, 50, 75, 100 yard on your dope card and do maybe like a 5, 10, 15 mile an hour wind. Or obviously if you live in an area with more wind, adjust accordingly. But knowing these things and knowing the target sizes or relative sizes is especially important when making uh, adjustments for wind. Use case three is going to use target sizes to determine creative holdover strategies. Um, holding the top or the bottom of the target. Now I discussed this in the NRL course of fire stage five uh, and just a preview from that video. I essentially dialed for a certain target and knowing the target sizes, I knew if I held, I didn't have to hold the 0.4 mils or the, I had to hold under 0.4 mils. I knew I, because of the target size, I could hold over and just hit top of the target, center of the target, bottom of the target, boom, boom, boom. I didn't have to think about it. I didn't have to look at my hash marks and my reticle. I could use the center hold and by aiming at different parts of the target, I was able to engage those targets successfully. Um, so I'll put a link to that up here somewhere, whatever corner the video is in, uh, if you want to see kind of a advanced use of this strategy, knowing target sizes. So just in conclusion, it's easy to make a spreadsheet to calculate target sizes. Rewatch this video. It's super easy to put into uh, Google Sheets or Excel. It should be the same. Um, standardizing the target sizes to MOA or uh, MRAD mills can give you an edge in your competitive shooting. Helps with the valuing target difficulty, which is that relative size, the wind calls and creative holdovers. Get creative and score more points. So if this video helped you score more points and give you a, a better understanding of relative target sizes, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with your friends. Until next time, get more points.